What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is my second channel, and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this, and you wanna see more of that, and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Let's talk about this documentary. This is a new documentary called Woodstock 99, Peace, Love, and Rage. Uh, it's on HBO Max. I was kind of surprised. I got a lot of messages from people asking me about it, so I finally got a chance to watch it. Spoiler warning, basically they say say that Woodstock 99, which had a bunch of riots and assaults and just crazy shit and stuff, they blame it all on Fred Durst and on white men. That's basically the angle of the thing is everything is the fault of white men who listen to new metal. Young white males. Which is somewhat true, but I think it's more bullshit than it's not. I watched this and I thought it sucked. I think it's a bunch of smug Gen X white people trying to look at everything through 2021 super woke glasses. Like people in the comments like HB woke. Um, but let's watch the trailer and see what they have to say. You could feel something bubbling. In pop culture, there's this dark energy coming from young white males that entertainment is perpetuating. You have a crowd who are excited, inebriated, and you give them a band to help them release that energy. What do you think's gonna happen? So you, you get the idea of where they're headed with it. I can't show boobies. You're right. There's probably gonna be some. Yeah, we can listen to the audio. We'll do that. Look at the history of American music. New metal was just bound to happen. This is a country whose music is basically forged in white people impersonating black people. Take a fucking shot for every time they say white people in this and you'll be dead by the time the stream is done. That, you know, a lot of times when like when white people have embraced hip hop, they've ignored the funk, they've ignored the R&B, you know, they've ignored the subtlety and they've embraced homophobia and misogyny. This is especially irritating to me because like 10 minutes before this, they spend 15 minutes talking about how great DMX is, who, like, I mean, he was a great rapper, but the dude had lots and lots of homophobic things to say in his lyrics and stuff. Like, not a woke person in the slightest. Last I heard, that niggas was having sex with the same sex. I show no love to homo thugs. There is nothing woke about rap. Empty out below the homo thugs. How you gonna explain fucking a man? If you want a genre of music that respects women and gay or trans people or whatever like it's not rap maybe moby has only listened to fucking jurassic 5 and j cole but i think he i think he's badly mistaken about rap culture the same thing with metal kid rock is an idiot we can agree on that crux of their argument is that uh the reason why things went bad is not because the promoters did a like grossly negligent job of managing an event with 400,000 fucking people it's because a bunch of white men who listened to new metal showed up and made everything bad literal angst bubbling up in the crowd and then i saw what was on the bill for the rest of the night which was in a row limp biscuit rage against the machine metallica that is a lot of aggression so probably everybody knows what happened you know at the end of their set everything goes crazy and there's you know, riots and this guy's crowd surfing on a piece of a door here everybody remembers this 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 was an iconic moment i think it is fair to say that woodstock 99 ended up being a shit show where a lot of bad stuff happened there was all the vandalism that they talk about you know there were some sexual assaults and other things that are very uncool and troubling so that part is right. But the question is, why did that happen so that we can prevent it from happening again? It's not because white guys who listen to new metal showed up, because if that was the problem, then every Ozfest would end the same way and it didn't. And every Summer Slaughter and every Hellfest and Vakken and like every every metal festival would turn into that if it was just the fault of white guys that listen to new metal. If that's if that's all it took was the presence of white guys that listen to Limp Biscuit, then every show would be like that, and they're not. So, you know, empirically, we know that that's not the case. We know that it's not as simple as just that white guys who listen to Limp Biscuit showed up. I think in a way, it sort of lets the promoters off the hook because the promoters are the one who caused this. The people who set this thing up, and they do talk about this in the documentary, to be fair. They set the stage by saying the promoters did all this bad stuff that created the conditions for this to happen, but then they shift the blame to white guys who listen to Limp Biscuit. Young white males. And I think that's bullshit because the promoters are the ones who did this. Like, they put 400,000 people in a muddy fucking fenced-in military base for four days without adequate food and water and shelter. And to me, what this shows is civilization is fragile. 
when the basic necessities of life go away, food, water, shelter, hygiene, like it says in the chat here, when that stuff goes away, shit gets fucked up. Human behavior is mostly situational. Like you see this in psychology again and again and again, that like the way people behave is largely dependent on the conditions that they're in. People are fucking animals. Like, yes, I would say that Limp Biscuit fans uh, are probably a little bit more aggressive than Alanis Morissette fans. And yes, a song like Break Stuff is definitely going to get you pumped up to fuck shit up if that's what you want to do. And yes, Fred Durst probably encouraged things a little bit. He could play the same song and say the same things at some mellow, you know, outdoor festival at 1 p.m. where everyone is fed and uh, has water and shade and nobody's going to do shit. Nobody's going to tear the place down. So it's not the fault of the artists and it's not the fault of white men. Young white males. It's the fault of the promoters. Like one of the things I was reading that they did, where did all these bonfires and shit come from? You can see one starting there, I think. Later in the night, there's more bonfires. Apparently the promoters were going to have like a candle lighting ceremony at the end of the night or whatever. So they gave everybody fucking matches. Like they passed out matches when you walked in. I, I, I'm not a lawyer, but it feels like that is like criminal neglig negligence there. Like giving them matches. Yeah. At dusk, humans are more excitable too. That's true. Like if you look at the crime statistics in every city, um, they go up in the summer at night when it gets hot and darker, people are crazier. They're more violent. Like that's that's just what happens. Young white males. It's racist. And not to say like, oh, let's cry for white men because, you know, people are discriminating against us. That's not actually the issue here. The issue is the the idea that people behave a certain way because of their race is a problem. Like, that's not cool. Rolling Loud is, I guess, probably the biggest like hip hop festival around. Back in 2019, it, it was nuts. As a few examples of what happened, somebody tried to shoot someone in Young, Young Thug's team in a drive-by. There were all these fucking fights because somebody said that there was an active shooter. There were all these fights just fucking breaking out everywhere. The same thing as you see at Woodstock 99. Kodak Black got yet another gun charge. NBA Youngboy's girlfriend got shot. A lot of crazy shit happened. Rolling Loud is primarily a black event. Would we then say that because this violence happened at Rolling Loud that black people are responsible for it? I wouldn't be comfortable saying that. Nobody would say that. That would be fucked up and racist. The problem is that when you introduce the idea that people behave a certain way based on their skin color, even like if they're white, then you introduce the idea that black people behave a certain way. Somebody, the fucking color of somebody's skin does not make them act a certain way. Young white males. Racial determinism is bullshit. People act a certain way because of the way their brain is structured and because of the circumstances that they're in. Everybody in prison is a fucking animal because prison is a fucked up hellhole where you have to fucking become an animal in order to survive. Everybody of every skin color is a fucking animal in prison because you have to be. It's it's a bunch of people who just don't like Fred Durst and don't like the sort of bro atmosphere around new metal, which is fine. Like I can totally understand why people might not like that. That's totally fair if you don't like this kind of energy, but just say that. Don't try to make it into this thing where like young white men are bad. Young white males. It's disappointing because I think there would be a more interesting conversation to be had about the fragility of civilization. Because to me, that's the bigger question. It's like, if like people get this crazy just on a hot day for a concert, what's going to happen like with climate change and stuff like that when like the, the bonds of civilization really start to fray? What's going to happen then? It's going to be fucked up. That to me is the much more interesting conversation than like white guys who listen to Limp Biscuit are bad. Young white males. Like what a fucking dumb, simplistic take on this. Like you should look at this as, oh, here's a window into human nature. This is, you know, if any of you guys are into philosophy, this is like Hobbes. In a state of nature, life is nasty, brutish, and short because you need a Leviathan that is capable, that has a monopoly on violence that's capable of controlling everybody. That's, that's the takeaway from this for me. Everyone will be a Limp Bizkit fan when the global warming chaos kicks in. That's fucking right. Kind of already saw a bit of that with the riots in the U.S. around the COVID lockdowns. That's true, too. I mean, like all the people trampling each other to get fucking toilet paper when there was no rational basis to worry about that. And like, look how ugly people got about that. Or like Black Friday. How many people get trampled for a goddamn TV? Is that the fault of white people? No, it's people. When people get into fight or flight mode, when people like are operating off of fear, they do crazy shit.